Hello students, myself Dr. Pallavi Rai Lavhale and I am going to teach you the unit 1 of Pharmacognosy 1 BP 405T and in today's class we are going to learn about the microscopic and the physical evaluation of crude drugs. So, as we discussed in our last class also that what is organoleptic evaluation we discussed regarding the different sense organs how they are used to uh, study a particular drug. In the continuation to that we are going to study about the microscopical evaluation as well as the physical evaluation of these crude drugs. So, many a times when we see a drug morphologically we cannot identify the adulterants present in that drug only on the organoleptic evaluation basis. So, we have to go for microscopic evaluation. It can also happen that the drug is in its powdered state. So, when we have a powder it becomes even difficult to do any kind of organoleptic studies except for color, taste and odor. So, in all such cases the only next step which a person can take that is the microscopic evaluation and generally the microscopic evaluation is done for the organized drug. Organized drug are those drugs which have a proper cellular constitution. They are either a part of a leaf, bark, root, wood, fruit, flower etcetera. Okay, they are not uh, listen to me carefully, they are not any kind of juice or extract or latest. In such drugs, normally we do not go for microscopical evaluation. Okay. So, generally this microscopical evaluation is important for the initial identification of the dr drugs or the herbs or identifying the small fragments of the crude or powdered drugs and even for detection of adulterants like any kind of remains of any animal or insects or mold or fungi. So, it helps in increasing the quality control of our particular drug. So, in earlier times what happened that uh, uh, people used to just observe the drug, taste them, smell them and identify it. But with the advent of the microscope, it became easier to understand the anatomical structure, the tissue arrangements, the cell walls and the entire structure and features of a particular part of a plant. And after that, we can also do the chemical studies using this microscopy itself. For example, in school you must have always done the identification of starch. If you take a potato piece and to that potato piece you add little starch and just view it under the microscope. So, inside the uh, starch you will see that there are many uh, you can say potato section you will see many ovular shaped starch grains are present which stain blue due to the iodine solution. So, what we have done? We have added iodine to potato and we have seen it under the microscope. It gives us a blue black color. So, this is a type of a chemical test which we are doing using the microscope and then it becomes a microchemical test. So, using microscopy we can identify the active constituents also. For one more example I would like to give like if mucilage is there then it gets stained pink with ruthenium red. So, this is one more uh, study which can be done using microscopic examination. Now, if we look at in uh, brief, what are the different types of cellular constituents? So, normally plant tissue can be differentiated as meristematic tissue or permanent tissue. Meristematic tissue are those tissues which are generally uh, able to differentiate into different types of cells. They can be present on the top that is the apical meristem, on the sides that is the lateral meristem as well as in the stem part which is known as the intercalary meristem. So, they differentiate into new cells while the other category are the permanent tissue which are already differentiated and they are either the simple type or the complex type. If they are simple they can be type of parenchyma, colenchyma or sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma is further divided into fibers as well as sclerides. Parenchyma are those cells which do not have lot of lignin on them and they are generally responsible for all the structure and functions of a particular plant, majority of them. 
कोलन कायमा हैव स्लाइड लिग्निन डिपोजिशन व्हिच गिव हार्डनेस टू सर्टेन एरियाज फॉर एग्जांपल द मिडरिब ऑफ अ लीफ इट हैज द कोलन कायमा सेल सो द मिडरिब गिव सर्टेन प्रोटेक्शन टू द लीफ एंड स्क्लेरन कायमा आर द हार्ड सेल्स फॉर एग्जांपल इन मेनी सीड्स ऑफ रूट्स दे आर वेरी वेरी हार्ड इन नेचर और द बार्क ऑफ अ ट्री इज वेरी वेरी हार्ड इन नेचर दैट इज ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द स्क्लेरन कायमा further the complex tissues permanent tissues they can be either xylem or phloem xylem is responsible for transport of water while phloem is responsible for transport of food xylem can be xylem is not a single moiety it has many many parts in it so what are the parts of xylem vessel it has tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma then xylem uh, you can say xylem fibers as well as the phloem it has sieve tubes companion cells phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers so together this bundle of cells come together to form the complex permanent tissues now if we look at the epidermal cells epidermal cells in any part of the plant they are they can be of different different types the four major types are either the straight walled epidermal cells wavy walled epidermal cells slightly wavy walled or beaded walled epidermal cells these are the different types of stomata it can be a diacytic stomata where the stomata it is divided at a 90 degree angle by the subsidiary cells it can be parasitic like in shown in this case that the the guard cells and the subsidiary cells they are parallel to each other it can be anisocytic in nature where we have one large uh, subsidiary cells one small subsidiary cell and one medium sized subsidiary cells so it will always have three subsidiary cells in which one is large and one is small the other is medium the third one is medium sized the fourth is anomocytic stomata where you can have multiple number of the subsidiary cells as in this picture you can see that beside one there is three subsidiary cells then four subsidiary cells and five subsidiary cells so this is known as anisocytic stomata and the fifth one which has a rose like arrangement it is known as actinocytic stomata these are the different types of the trichomes trichomes can be unicellular in nature they can be multicellular in nature they can be branched in nature okay so we have different different types of the uh, trichomes also and each leaf has its own uh, you can say fixed type of trichome if we look at dhatura dhatura has this multicellular type of stomata but it is unbranched if we look at rosemary it is having this branched kind of structure okay so these are the different you can say they are very much significant to that particular drug only they will tell us that yes this drug is having this type of trichomes these are few other examples these are the glandular trichomes glandular trichomes are those trichomes which produce any kind of secretions or volatile oils for protection of the plant or some other part or purpose for the plant for example again if we look at marigold or tobacco tambaku it has this kind of gl uh, glandular trichome peppermint or sage it has this kind of bulb shaped uh, type of trichomes then we have different different types of xylem vessels present in the stem and the root and they can be identified easily using the microscope few are annular type spiral type scleriform type reticulate type vessels with simple pits or vessels with bordered pits bordered pits are something where you have this kind of structure simple pits are circular bordered pits are double circular in scleriform we have deposition of some lignin or certain substances on the surface of the xylem while spiral has a spring like structure annular has ringed structure on it so we can easily identify these structures under the microscope and then we can uh, we can uh, just note that if this drug is there it will have this type of xylem vessel if you have get a sample where the xylem vessel is different you can say that this is a adulterated kind of drug sample here i have just uh, taken few examples for your concern which are the natural pictures this is the picture of a 
trichomes of nux vomica seed when the seed is cut the seed contains certain trichomes and it gives a beautiful section we can study that using this this is a section where we can see the phloem fibers which are stained pink with the u with the help of fluoroglucinol and hcl in equal proportion this picture is of starch which is stained blue with the help of iodine solution and this is a very beautiful rosette shaped crystal present in rhubarb rhubarb is a drug which is used as a laxative so these are the identifying characteristics of different different types of drug and looking at that we can easily identify and say that yes this drug is having this particular feature so in microscopy in for in next lectures we are going to learn in detail about these evaluations as per your syllabus which will cover linear measurements leaf constants as well as quantitative microscopy now moving further we will move to the physical evaluation of these crude drugs so physical evaluation means when we are discussing the physical properties of a drug and based on that when we perform any kind of studies they come under the physical evaluation for example if a drug is containing mucilage so mucilage has a property of swelling so we will check the swelling index of that particular drug if a drug is having saponins then that drug will have frothing property so we will check the foam index of that particular drug if a drug is crystalline in nature then we will check its melting point and purity of that particular drug so these are few examples we are using the basic property of the drug we decide and perform certain studies so naming a few i would like to start with moisture content moisture content is something where what happens that if a particular natural drug is having lot of water in it then it becomes a very good source of growth for the microorganisms microorganisms start growing at a very fast rate because the plant drug contains starch and few other sources of energy so microbes have water and starch they start growing in the particular plant and degrade it but normally if we look at all the drugs they should be used in their dried form because if they are dried then you can store it up for a long period of time because they will be free of those microbial contaminations so we normally what we do that we use certain techniques like loss on drying or carl fischer technique carl fischer titration technique for finding out the moisture content of a particular drug lod means loss on drying where a particular amount of drug is weighed then it is kept in hot air oven for a long period of time say about 2 3 hours at more than 105 degree centigrade it can be increased to 150 also but 105 degree centigrade is the minimum temperature required and after that we keep on weighing the sample again and again until a constant weight is reached once a constant weight is reached we know that yes now our drug has lost entire moisture so we ca we calculate the initial weight and the uh, the uh, weight after the drying so the difference between that will tell us that what is the moisture which is lost due to heating inside the hot air oven now the who guidelines that is the world health organization it gives certain guidelines where a limit is fixed for particular drug that how much moisture can be present in that particular drug for example if we have a aloe the moisture should not be more than 10% if we have digitalis it should not be more than 5% and in starch it no, should not be more than 15% so you can see that different different drugs different limits are there based on their tendency to degrade or the you can say the place where they have been uh, manufactured inside the plant some plants for example aloe it is aloe is obtained from the juice so it is going to contain lot of water so we cannot reduce the water content less than 10% while if we talk about digitalis it is having many glycosides which can break very easily in presence of uh, moisture so there we have we need to dry it so that it, the moisture content is less than 5% the next parameter is viscosity viscosity is generally performed 
for liquid substances it can be done for honey or certain oil or certain other substances and generally the brookfield viscometer is used for the determination of viscosity so we can determine that at what range what is the rheology of our particular drug that can be uh, studied so here the examples are liquid paraffin it should uh, the uh, viscosity should not be less than 64 centi stokes while pyroxylene the, the limit is 1100 to 2450 centi stokes the third parameter is melting point see purity is one of the main characteristic of any particular drug and to study the purity you should the best possible technique is melting point now melting point we cannot do for natural drugs but yes certain substances or the unorganized drugs which are available from the uh, plant material they can be studied by uh, studied using this melting point okay so we can analyze the purity of certain substances which are obtained after processing from plants or animal sources for example colophony colophony is a resin which is obtained from the plant or the tree trunk trunk in uh, in hindi we call it tarpeen okay so the tarpeen which is produced from the tree trunk that is also known as colophony and the melting point for colophony is 75 to 85 degree centigrade for beeswax the material which is obtained from the bee hives the melting point is 62 to 65 degree centigrade while wool fat has the range of 34 to 44 degree centigrade wool fat is a substance which is obtained when the wool is uh, you can say purified at that time the uh, sebaceous secretions of the sheep it is generally produced and that is having a very good you can say humectant properties as well as it is one of the best bases for ointments so wool fat is used in making ointments and lotions so there the use of wool fat is there and it is also from uh, animal source and the melting point lies between 34 to 44 degree centigrade now if we talk about the solubility every drug which is uh, given uh, through the you can say regulatory control we should have a proper information about the solubility of the drug solubility in short determines the bioavailability of a drug it means how much drug is going to reach the site of action if a drug is completely water soluble in nature may be it will not be able to penetrate through the phospholipid membrane of our cells but if a drug is completely lipophilic in nature then there are issues in uh, you can say preparing or uh, the disintegration in the stomach itself and there may be some other problems if a drug is completely water soluble in nature so there has to be a balance between lipophilicity and hydro felicity for different drugs now when we are performing any study also or analytical studies also at that time also we should have the information about the uh, solubility of these drugs so that is why the solubility study is a important pa parameter by all the regulatory bodies for example castor oil is reported to be soluble in 3 volumes of alcohol balsam of peru it is soluble in chloral hydrate solution asafoetida it is soluble in carbon disulfide alkaloid bases are soluble in chloroform see alkaloid bases means the free form of alkaloid but the alkaloid they also exist as salts and the salts they are generally not soluble in chloroform but they are soluble in water so you have to understand that solubility changes with the property of the drug if a alkaloid is in a free base it will be soluble in chloroform but it is if it is in a salt form then it will be soluble in water and then colophony colophony is soluble in light petroleum ether next parameter is optical rotation now many substance have the property of rotating the plane of polarization okay that is when a monochromatic light falls on a particular substance it can rotate the plane of polarization either to the right or to the left it if, if it rotates to the right we call it dextro rotatory if it rotates to the right we call it levo rotatory in 
nature. So, if, whenever we want to identify any drug, generally the volatile oils or the sugars, they have this property of rotating the plane of polarization. Also, some of the alkaloids have these properties. So, if we have the information that our drug is having any of these ingredients, then we can determine the, uh, the basically optical rotation of this particular drug. For example, caraway oil has the optical rotation of plus 75 to plus 80 degrees, club oil has the rotation from 0 to 6 degree, honey has from minus 3 to minus 15 degree. So, these are the optical rotations. Then the refractive index, refractive index is again generally for the transparent or translucent substances. When a ray of light falls on this, it, it changes the angle. Okay, the angle of the ray and then we get the refractive index of that particular substance. So, whenever the original path it gets bent due to the change in the density or the, you can say the nature of the next particular material that is known as refraction okay, and there is a particular angle by which the refraction takes place that is known as the refractive index. So, the oils like arachis oil, castor oil, club oil, they have a specified refractive index. For example, the refractive index of water is 1, but if we look at club, the refractive index of club is 1.5 to 1.535. So, this, this is a parameter which can be used to identify the purity of the club. Then next is ash value, ash value is something uh, which is studied to identify the inorganic content of our particular drug. The drug it may be of a natural source, but because it is taking many of the minerals, many of the metals, it has lot of inorganic substances also in it. Okay. For example, the carbonates, phosphates, silicates of sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium. So, if we determine it by incineration means by putting the samples of known weight into the muffle furnace and then heating it at a very high temperature say 600 degree centigrade to about 1000 degree centigrade, we completely burn out all the carbon and hydrogen and whatever is remaining is only the inorganic material like the silicates or the salts. So, what we get is the ash or we call it the total ash of that particular drug. If we are taking x gram of drug and from that x gram, if we get suppose y gram of ash. So, we can say that if x gram of drug is giving us y gram of ash, then how much ash will be given by 100 gram of drug. So, that becomes our total ash value. By processing it with concentrated acids and digesting it and again performing the ashing using a ashless filter paper, we can determine the acid insoluble ash also. By treating it with sulfuric acid, we can get the sulfated ash value also and after treating with the acid, whatever is remaining ash, that becomes our water soluble ash. So, doing a simple exercise of first preparing a ash, then treating with acid and filtering it. After filtration, whatever is there on the ashless filter paper, it is incinerated again in a muffle furnace, then we take the weight again and lastly, we can also treat the original total ash with sulfuric acid and get the sulfated ash. Now, we use muffle furnace for as the instrument and the container which is used for performing the ash, it is known as a silica crucible. We call it silica crucible. Now, we come to the next point that is extractive value. Extractive value is something what we do for the organic substances. When a particular drug, it, we know now the inorganic part. So, what is left is the organic part. So, organic part contains what? It contains different, different hydrocarbon 
derivatives for example there may be sugars there may be oils there may be secondary metabolites like alkaloids glycosides etc so we can extract them in different solvents like ether alcohol or water depending upon their solubility in these ingredients okay so if it is a oil soluble substance it will go in ether if it is alcohol soluble it will go in alcohol and if it is a hydrophilic substance it will go in water and we determine the total amount of these ingredients in different different solvents that becomes the extractive value we can determine the volatile oil content using the clevenger apparatus by simple distillation technique when the drug is evaporated and then cooled down we get the known amount of essential oil this is the volatile oil content we can also determine the foreign organic matter means if a drug is there if we get a sample we spread out the sample and find out what weight of substances are not from that particular drug so that weight of the drug becomes the foreign organic matter we can determine the swelling factor for mucilaginous drug by placing a drug in a uh, measuring cylinder and leaving it uh, with water for a particular time after some time we determine that how much swelling has take, taken place that is the swelling factor so with this we finish our physical as well as the microscopic evaluation of drug few parts of the microscopic evaluation will be continued in the next lectures